All right. Welcome everyone to day two of this five day journey. And this five day journey is all about you sharing your soul's medicine in your career. And it was so awesome to hang out with you yesterday. Thank you so much for your comments and your, your questions and sharing your insights. So we're going to really step into day two. I'm going to start with a little recap. So before anything, let's just take some nice cleansing breaths together <sighs> and visualize your heart like we did yesterday, your heart, right? Your heart. And we can visualize your heart, visualize your heart connected to your soul's heart. And you're turning on the magnet and you're calling back to you all of your energy, all of your energy, all of your presence, your focus, all of you call it back here to this moment. And at the same time, bring your awareness to your hips, to your you know, lower spine, and release. See those roots going down into the earth and releasing, releasing anything that's not yours. And your soul can be in charge of this. Remember yesterday we talked about the soul plan and your soul, how amazing and vast it is. So let your soul be in charge of you calling back to you all of your energy. If you left any aspect of you with anyone else or with any um, a situation, call it back. Even in the past, you know, if there's some thing that happened, particularly if it was painful or traumatic, oftentimes parts of us get attached to the past. They're still there. So we're calling it back to this present moment. And then through these roots, you're releasing what isn't yours. And we're just going to welcome you. We've already opened the space. I already blessed the five days, but we just remember that your angels and archangels, the ascended master guides are here, your enlightened ancestors, and of course, divine mother, father, creator, creatrix of all life, whatever word you use for that God, source, great mystery, universe. Some people call it mind, whatever it is. We welcome that, that unconditional love to surround each of you, each of us, all of us, those of you who are watching the replay, those of you who are here live. And so with that, bring your hands over your heart. Already turn on that muscle of receiving from your soul and ask that question in silence. What am I here to receive today? What am I here to release? What am I here to receive? What am I here to release? What am I here to receive? What am I here to release? And with that, we bring the palms of our hands together and we bow to each other and we begin. Yay, with day two. And if you want to share in the chat anything that came up to you about receiving and releasing, please feel free to do that. Uh, namaste, Roxana. So glad that you're here. Okay, so let's do a little recap. I have my notes here because I want to be really focused. <laughs> I do want to show you the card I pulled for all of us today. Look at this. Rainbow child, just unstoppable, new earth builder, multi-talented, miraculous alchemy. This is for all of us. Look at this. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And tomorrow we're going to really be talking about our inner children. We're going to, you know, they're here today as well, but look at this. I love that. So, Deborah, you're receiving clarity and grace. Awesome. So let's do a little recap. Yesterday's practice, and like I said, I have my notes, is practice number one is committing to receiving from your soul every day. It's like taking your soul vitamins, like literally every day throughout the day, you're receiving from your soul. And I talked about, so to go back to my little drawing from yesterday, my little inner child's drawing, right? How your soul is in the soul plane, right? The soul plane, big smile, heart, 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 lots of love, lots of love radiating. And you can't see the yellow vortex here. It's vortex, your soul's vortex, right? And what is your soul saying? I love you always. I've got you. Nobody else has your soul's medicine. I know everything you've gone through. And, and your soul's not saying this like in a sneaky, scary way, right? Your soul's saying this with so much admiration for you, with so much compassion for you. I always have something to give you, right? Your soul's always abundantly giving. I'm abundant, abundant, and there's so much more, right? But this is the soul plane. Then we have the earth plane. And I thickened this line to show 
how there can be really this, this like, um, almost like wall that appears to be between the soul plane and the earth plane, right? And the earth plane we know has lots of stuff, lots of um, traumatic, painful energy, right? And so some of the things that you could be telling yourself when you're here, where you when you're disconnected from your soul, right? I'll make a mistake, specifically when you think about sharing your soul's medicine in your career or creative endeavors. I'll make a mistake. I'm alone. I'm not ready. I'll be rejected. I don't have time to connect with my soul. There's more important things to do. I don't have anything to offer. I'm not special. I'll let people down. I'll disappoint people. I'll be judged. All the things, right? There's also in the earth plane trauma, not just your own trauma, but the trauma from the collective, old beliefs. There's what some people refer to as the false matrix, right? There's all of these things. And of course, there's also beauty in the earth plane. I don't want to suggest that there isn't. Of course there is. But there's a lot of pain here, right? And there's a lot of um, forgetting, right? There's a lot of forgetting of who we truly are. And into this pot, into this world, this earth plane, we so courageously agreed to come. Really think of that. Here we are in the soul plane, so much love. And we decided, we we're like, yep, yeah, pick me, pick me, pick me. I will go to the earth plane and I will forget this. And some of us didn't fully forget, but we forgot a lot. And I, I will drop into this world, right? That has all of this. That's why it's a courageous human journey, right? And so... When I talked about yesterday, practice one, here's a couple of other little drawings my little inner child made. Practice one, right? We said we want to move the soul plane and the earth plane closer together. So notice how now I didn't have a wall. Now it's permeable. There's an arrow going in, an arrow going out. Because we are learning how to travel, how to keep going into the soul plane to receive from our soul. That's what practice number one is. It's about doing this every day, not just when you're on retreat or you're in a vacation or you're alone in the house and everything's calm, right? That's Those times are easy, but really the, the mastery comes from doing this every day, right? And so I circled here some of the soul qualities. I put love, healing, magnetism, curiosity, compassion, radiance, generosity, genius, abundance. These are some of the natural qualities of your soul. So I put them here in circles, right? So the more you receive, right, the easier it is for you to receive those, to remember those. So practice number one, is receiving consistently from your soul. And I put here at least two times, at least two times a day for a minute or less. I mean, look at how like literally short that time is. So you, if you have parts that are like, oh, I'm so busy. And I understand when I started this practice, I mean, I still, I have five children for those of you who don't know. And now, you know, they're older. My oldest child is 20. I keep, people keep asking me here how old my kids are. You know, as I meet new people and I keep telling them my oldest is 28. She's 29. Yesterday I was like, she's 29. What am I thinking? Right. So I have a 29 year old. I have a 28 year old. I have a 26 year old. that's going to be 27 in April. I have a 23 year old. that's going to be 24 in July. And I have a 22 year old. that's going to be 23 in March. So if you do the math, when I started this, like really explicitly, really, really like thinking, okay, I'm going to meditate and connect with my soul. That was 15 years ago. My kids were, I still had little kids at home. I was a middle school teacher. So I know it wasn't, it wasn't like I had tons of time at all. And so it doesn't require a lot. It requires consistently. Now, so, consistency. Now, some of you are at a different point in your life, right? Some of you have been meditating for years and finding the time isn't a challenge anymore, but the up leveling for you is really making it consistent throughout the day that you're receiving from your soul. 
you know, one of the things my soul told me years ago, I've shared it before when I was starting a meditation practice. I know I shared about, I have you not the other way around, but when I started teaching meditation and I started doing meditation and then teaching meditation is my soul said meditation is an, is not meditation is an arrival, not an escape because a lot of people use meditation to escape, right? Because again, remember here you are. So of course it's very normal that we want to just escape. Just take me here, take me here, take me here. I don't want to think about this. Let me just be here. But what's the problem with that? The problem with that is when you're done meditating, you're back here and nothing has changed. So that's why my soul very clearly said it's an arrival. What did my soul mean? It meant we're arriving to where who we really are. And when you're receiving consistently, what is happening? What the practice we're going to talk about today is blending from your blending with your soul and blending from your parts. Okay. So what we're doing is you're learning to blend, to be become more comfortable being in the soul plane and bringing that energy here to the earth plane. This is what creating heaven on earth is about. Heaven on earth isn't escape. Let me bury my head in the sand and not look at the ugly that's here on earth and just, just I can't wait to take off and be with my soul. That's not what we signed up for. We signed up for those of you who are here in this call is to be part of the awakening for planet earth, to come here and share love and remind ourselves and everybody else of the truth. So we're here to bring this just as the masters did, just as uh, Jesus and Kuan Yin and Green Tara and some Buddha did is to remember to remind others of the truth. Okay, so when you, that's what I'm saying, practice number one is essential. And so let me read some of the other things that I said. Okay, so when you do this every day, what are you doing? You're not just receiving from your soul. Your physical body and energetic body is getting rewired. Okay, it's getting upgraded. It's like your physical body and energy body, your chakras, your meridians, your organs, your cells, everything is getting infused with the soul plane and you're getting upgraded so you can re you can not only receive more of your soul's light, but you can transmit it. You can carry it around in the world. And so, yes, you know, taking energy healing classes and energy training and all of those things are important and powerful, but you have something that you can do literally every day throughout the day to help with this. And yes, I'm reading Michelle's, you know, she's saying receiving pleasure and joy. Yes, because that's the other qualities of our soul. I could put, I could add pleasure, joy, bliss. And so... Uh, the reason I'm going on about this is because it's very important that you understand how essential this is. You know, it's very easy for us to be like, okay, receive from my soul every day. Mm -hmm, that's nice. Okay, but let's get to the meaty practice. No, this is it. This is the really big practice. And there's so much resistance to it. The other thing I want to share is when you do this, this is what, for those of you who are interested in, or you maybe you already are, let me rephrase that. Everybody is an oracle, a channel. What does that mean? An oracle or a channel, all it means is someone who can travel to the soul plane and get messages and bring them back to the earth plane. That's all it is. Everyone has that ability. Everyone has that as a gift, not just the special people. Everyone is supposed to be, it's our birthright, but not everyone has the tools to heal the blocks to that. And so I know for me, when I started this practice, I didn't go in and thinking, I want to do this so I can go to the soul plane and talk to Mother Mary and Kuan Yin and my soul and then channel messages and bring them back. That wasn't my purpose. I started because I had so much anxiety, crippling anxiety, and I had I had a therapist, I was doing all the things and I just kept hearing that I needed to meditate. And so that's why I began. I began because I had a lot of anxiety. Now looking back, I know that my soul was saying, start meditating because every time you meditate, you're gonna be receiving from me and I'm gonna start to help you dissolve this anxiety. And this anxiety, a lot of it came from childhood trauma and experiences that I had, right? So 
and from other lifetimes. But as I kept doing that, 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 without me even knowing, I was starting to become really good at being in the soul plane and starting to be able to access the answers and guidance from there. So if if you are here and part of your medicine, you know, is, is doing that, then know that also this daily receiving is important. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why every session I have with my clients, I start with a meditation. And it's a short meditation, probably at the most three minutes long. I mean, it could be a little longer sometimes, it could be shorter. And when I first got the message to do that with my clients, I had so much resistance. Because right? I was like, oh my gosh, people are going to think I'm wasting time. People are going to be like, no, let's just get to work. I had all this fear, but my soul kept saying, I'm like, no, you need to start with a meditation. I didn't know what I was doing was that I was starting to help them tap into the soul plane every day, every time they had a session with me, that that's what we were doing. And that I was also tapping into the soul plane of their soul so that I could help them access answers. I didn't know all that. Right? I just knew that that's how I was supposed to start. And now it feels so normal. I don't even think about it. So that was practice number one. Now we're going to talk about practice number two. Practice number two is, so if this is so great, if this is so lovely, why don't we do it? Why is it so hard to do this every day? Why is it so hard to receive from our soul? Why is it most of humanity not doing this and us us who even know better we still don't do it sometimes right why is that okay the reason there's a lot of reasons but the reason we're going to talk about that today is your parts we all have different parts of us now this is based on the internal family systems model of psychotherapy which I was trained in, you know, 15 years ago and have been a, a student of, a client of, a practitioner of for all those years. But but it's older than that, right? It's like, and of course it has my own interpretations as well. In, in my book that turned eight this year, uh, practice three or practice two? Gosh, I can't believe I don't remember. No, that was <laughs> practice number... But yeah, it is practice number two, naming and embracing your fears is based on that. So obviously in the two days that we're going to be doing this, I can't cover everything, but I'm giving you what is important. I know some of you have heard me teach about this. And this is, you know, in my coaching sessions, there's so much of this work that we do, whether directly or indirectly. So anyway, you have these parts. Okay, we have drawing number two. Here's you. And then you have these parts, 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 parts. And I didn't use any of like kind of the fancy labels for them. I just put parts, adult, inner child part, adult part, inner teen part, adult parts. So all the little blue stick figures are different parts of you. Parts, 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 parts. Now I do have a green part here that says other people's parts. Because sometimes we can carry other people's parts. And then I have these black, kind of like darker, I, I didn't know how to draw them, but just like dense, this is dense energy, critters in quotations. Sometimes that's the term used. And this says a uh, dense energy because sometimes we can also have just dense, dark energy. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go into this as much today, but when I do work, when I've done as a client, most of the work obviously is with my own parts, but absolutely many times when I was working with my amazing coach, you know, we had a relationship for 14 years until she retired. And, you know, every two weeks I went to her for a two hour session and we would go inside and we would do work on my parts. I didn't know that what was happening in those 14 years, because part of me was thinking, what is wrong with me that I need so much healing? But what was happening, I realize now is that I was learning a map of the soul plane and the parts world. Yes, I was healing myself, but it was my training to be able to do this with others. I'm not suggesting you have to go to parts therapy for 14 years, but that was my journey because it's part of what I teach. 
And so when I was going into those sessions, yes, a lot of it was my parts, but sometimes other people's parts would show up. And I was like, what? And this is the, the one exception to the rule of we can't get rid of our parts. The only time we can get rid of parts, get rid of is probably not the best way to say it, release, send back, is parts that aren't ours. So sometimes we might be carrying parts of our parents, parts of people who've hurt us and so on. And those get released and back to their own soul. Now, I forgot to mention the parts in orange here says past life, past life parts, past life parts, past life parts. I should have put a bunch more because I've done a lot of healing with my past life parts and a lot of my clients end up doing that work too, right? And so these are parts that are attached to a past life that have trauma. So what I wrote here, we're learning to act towards our parts as our soul does towards us. So our role, part of, part of our biggest training in this planet is just like um, that other drawing I did yesterday, or my inner child did, right? Our soul loves you, 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 always loves you, loves you, loves you. If you're sharing your medicine, your soul loves you, loves you, loves you. If you're not sharing your medicine, your soul loves you, loves you, loves you. If you were nice, your soul loves you, loves you, loves you. If you were rude, your soul loves you. It's like always, your soul loves you, okay? Always, always, always. And so we, part of our most important training is to learn to love and have compassion for our parts, no matter what. Now, this doesn't mean you let them run the show, right? Because some parts can create quite a lot of problems for us. They have good intentions. They have noble intentions. They think they're protecting us. But it does mean this is where the practice of self-love comes from. What does self-love mean? Self-love is really loving our parts. And the only way you can do that, you cannot do that from the ego place because the ego doesn't really understand what love is. You can only do that if you're connecting with your soul, if you're receiving and connecting from your soul, because then you're, you are tapped into that unconditional love that can love your parts. So, Practice number two is unblending from your parts, right? Is blending with your soul, which is what practice number one does, and unblending from your parts. Because if I could have drawn another drawing, these parts could be all on top of you, right? And then you can't, you can't think or you're taken over by a part, right? And so if we talked yesterday, I asked you, what are your fears that come up? Right when you think about following your soul's guidance consistently, and you you all shared such great you know wonderful, truthful answers. I'm afraid my soul's gonna tell me to do something I don't want to do. I'm afraid my soul's gonna lead me astray. I'm afraid to disappoint my soul. Right, and and there's so many others I've heard from clients or from my own self. Right, I'm afraid that it's just gonna take too much time, and I just don't have the energy for it. I'm afraid I'm going to become weird and nobody's going to want to talk to me. I'm afraid I'm going to get overwhelmed and I, I just won't have the energy for it. All those fears are coming from different parts of you. Okay? Right? All those fears. And so the work that we must do, my life's work has been to heal my own parts and to help my clients and students do the same. Because as you heal the parts, as you have, if you, as first of all, as you identify them, oh my gosh, I have a part that's terrified of people rejecting me. And so it's been, you know, yesterday's uh, Rise Up transmission was all about perfectionism. That's a part. It's like, oh, no, 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 we have to be perfect. We have to be perfect. You've got to have the perfect website. You have to have the perfect little speech you say, the elevator speech to explain what you do. You have, the, you have to have the perfect outfit. You have to have the perfect microphone and video camera and whatever else before you share your medicine because we want to control how people respond to you, right? We want to make sure they don't judge you. They don't think you're unprepared. We want to make sure all the things. And so this is what is essential, this work. And so the, the tool that I'm going to share with you, and some many of you have done it before, is called the parts diagram. 
hearts diagram. So in the middle, I put following my soul's guidance. And I could have put, uh, probably would have made sense to put following my soul's guidance consistently. Or you can say committing to my soul every day or whatever you want to put in the center. So you're going to do that. And the way to find out what parts are really up for you, are taking up a lot of space, are creating blocks. You can put a bunch of parts right here. I could draw little stick fig figures here that are making it hard for you to do this. This is a way to figure it out, is to do a parts diagram. So I want you to write on your paper, following my soul's guidance consistently. You could say to share my soul's medicine. <laughs> I know that's very long, but you get the idea, right? So at the center, something along the line of following of my following, oops, sorry, following my soul's guidance consistently share my soul's medicine. You could put something like that at the center <laughs> or you can shorten it. Okay. Now you might have parts that are very excited about it. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds exciting. I totally want to do this. I'm ready. And those are great. Generally, we don't need to do anything with those parts, just kind of embrace them and they're there. But I want you to tap into if there's any resistance. And if you're human, there probably is, right? Any resistance that comes up, any, just anything that comes up, whatever thoughts, right? So it could be like, um, I'm just going to give you a minute, actually, for you to tune in yourself. When you think about following your soul's guidance consistently, not every now and then, consistently, no matter what is going on outside of you, what comes up? And just write it in each line. So maybe, so like this, I don't have time. It's too hard. So it's, so I put, I don't have time. It's too hard. So do you just write whatever comes? Okay, so do that now for a few moments. I'm going to drink a little water while you do that. Oh, I realize I put constantly. <laughs> Okay, I know that was not a lot of time, but I'm curious, you know, just if you want to share in the chat, what are some of the things that came up for you? I just wrote, I don't have time. It's too hard. But what came up? You could just share one. Or, you know, when you look at your list, I want you to notice which one is the loudest one? So, for example, if I had one that says, I'm going to be disappointed, right? If I say, well, I am worried that if I commit to this, and I still don't get the results I want, I'm gonna be so disappointed. And maybe I could circle that one and say, that's the biggest one for me. Deborah said, guilt that my path takes me away. Wait, whoa, hold on, sorry, it went up, hold on. Guilt that my path takes me away from family obligations, helping with my aging parents. Yeah, so that's a big one, guilt, right? I had that when I, in fact, I share that in my book, when I left teaching, right? When I was considering leaving teaching, I did a lot, a lot of parts diagrams. And one of them was guilt, guilt that I'm leaving such a noble profession, guilt that I'm abandoning my students, guilt that, you know, I worked in the Chicago public schools back when I was in Chicago. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need so many teachers. How could I leave? Right. So I had, so I understand Deborah. And I know 
and I've had guilt around family as well, but yes. So guilt is one of yours. So you, so if that's the biggest one, Deborah, just put a little circle around it. Jill put, I'm surprised at what came up. No one sees it. It's too much pressure. I'm tired. Oh yeah. Okay. No one sees it. It's too much pressure. I'm tired. Great, Jill. And I know Jill has been doing this work for a long time as I have. So it's really nice when we're surprised, right? Because one of the challenges when you've been doing this work for so long is that a part can really take over and be like, oh, I can just do this in my head. I can just like, I know what it is, but we don't. This is why we need coaches. This is why we need other people to help us. And so, so for yours, Jill, circle, which one is the one that kind of you feel in this moment? It's like, who this one, this one, I feel more. Oh, Roxana wrote, too many things happen at once, too many choices. Yes. Great, Roxana. So write that down and like circle, which one is it? So maybe there's a part that's like, I'm going to get overwhelmed. It's going to be too much. Right. And so maybe that's the part. And so this is the thing with our parts. Remember what I said, that we're learning how to relate to our parts as our soul relates to us. So one of the things that happens when we first start to discover our parts is that we can have a very overeager part that's like, all right, let me fix it. Great. I have a part that's afraid that I'll get overwhelmed. How do I fix that part? How do I make it stop being overwhelmed? Or how do I get rid of it? Or whatever it is, right? Or if you discover there's a part that is just such a critic of yourself, an inner critic, that's like, you're not ready. You don't know enough. You know, who are you fooling? And maybe you discover this part and you're like, I hate this part. Can I just get rid of it, please? And the answer is no, you cannot. And, but what you learn is first of all, the answer is always compassion for these parts. Because your soul is never impatient with you. Your soul, you know, doesn't look at, Jill's soul doesn't look at her list and thinks like, oh my gosh, Jill, come on. How could you be too tired? snap out of it, right? Her soul doesn't say that. Her soul, first of all, knows that all the parts are there and has so much compassion and has so much love. And, and more than anything wants Jill to remember, but remember, I am abundant. That means I have an abundance of energy and love and ideas and synchronicity and resources that I can send you. But your but her soul's not shaking her like, come on, snap out of it, right? Like, no. And so we're learning to relate in that way to our parts. Jojo saying, fear will not manage money from an inheritance. Oh my gosh, yes. So you might want to do a whole parts diagram on that. It's kind of like a little sub diagram of this where you put in the middle, my inheritance. And then right there would be a part that's like, you're going to mismanage your money. You're going to spend it too much or whatever it's going to say. You're going to give it to people or whatever. Just write all the parts down. And many people, we can be scared of looking at it. But once you have your thing, it's like, okay, I'm starting to unblend. And the little tool I'm going to show you today, there's more to this, but this little tool is like, then what will be the most important to do before anything else? You want to bring all of that to the soul plane. Because let me tell you something, your soul never gets overwhelmed. Just like the God doesn't get overwhelmed, just like Mother Mary Kuan Yin never gets overwhelmed because they are they don't have an ego anymore. They're in the soul plane, right? And then there's the seventh plane and all the planes. So the first thing and the tool for today is really you do the parts diagram, first of all. You decide which is the loudest part, which is the part. So Valerie's saying, need to regenerate before giving more. Okay. And I, I love that you're sharing this, Valerie, because those are some of the, the fears that can feel very realistic, right? And now your soul might literally be saying, Valerie, you need to wait. And in fact, in, in my book, I talk about sometimes our soul says, wait, that's a very real message that your soul might be saying, you know, go do yoga, Take some walks, stop pushing, stop hustling. In this moment, you need to receive more. That's a very legitimate message from our soul. But what needs to happen is we need to understand when it's coming from our soul and when it's coming from a part that's scared, right? So there might be a part that's like, so that happens to me all the time because, you know, I had a very intense childhood 
I was a mom very young. I had kids very, you know, close together, had a very intense ex relationship, blah, 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 all the things. So I was legit exhausted. I legit had to like um, heal from a lot of stuff. And my parts, my, my lovely parts have a lot of trauma from that, from times where things seem very, very busy, very, very overwhelming. So I can have a part that's like, oh, no, 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 that's going to be too overwhelming. Like with this five day journey, I had a part that was very much like, are you kidding? You just did the Bridget thing. That was free. Now you're going to do a free five day event. You're giving too much. You're going to be so exhausted. You're going to be so depleted. People are going to take advantage of you. Like there were all these things when my parts were saying. And I had to really pause and first of all, understand where it was coming from and, and thank the part like, okay, I want to make sure I'm not doing this out of codependency or because I feel I need to do this or blah, blah, blah. But I knew it was coming from my soul because my soul had told me before, you're going to do this five-day event, this five-day free journey. That's the next masterclass. But I had to like really listen to those parts and really be with that part and understand it was coming from trauma. And remember what my part says that when I follow my soul's guidance, I'm always going to be regenerated. I'm always going to be filled up. I'm always going to have the energy for it. Now, does that mean that I didn't wake up this morning thinking like having a part that thought like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm just on day two. Wait, hold on. Aid. But but I had to like have compassion from that part, um, blend from that part, and then connect with my soul and remember like, oh, like how much I'm receiving from this, right? So it's so again, these practices are so essential. Okay, so now that you found, so I'm, I'm asking each of you to choose one of the parts, one of the parts that like is really a loud part right now. Maybe it's the, you know, Deborah, she shared the part that felt guilty. Maybe for Roxana is the part that's like, I'm going to have too many choices. Maybe for Valerie is a part, even if it is a true message from her soul, but maybe she also has a part that's like, no, 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 you have to regenerate more. We don't want you to get overwhelmed again. It's going to be too much. It's going to be, you know, maybe it's that part. Or, you know, for Jojo, maybe you're a part that's like, you're going to mismanage your inheritance. Or Jill, you know, it's too much pressure. And so we're going to do a little quick journey into the soul plane and bring, you know, how is it that this works? I want to be very mindful of how I explain this. It isn't that you're here and you find this part and you're dragging it to the soul plane. All right, I'm going to drag you to the soul plane so you get healed. No, that would be disrespectful. That would ultimately be harmful. Your soul never does that, right? Your soul is just like, hey, you can decide not to share your medicine. I still love you. Your soul's never in a hurry. But what happens is more that as you do this, we become a bridge so that the soul plane, that love can come to our hearts. Now, as you do this more, and this is what I teach my clients is, you can start having conversations with your parts. You can start listening to their story. You can start teaching them and they can get to a point where like, I, I, I'm ready to receive from, from our soul and the parts can unburden. And there's all of these things that happen, right? But in the beginning and in, and all the time, what you can do already is you become a channel for your soul's medicine to go to these parts. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay. And so before we start, I'm just going to check if there's, or if there's anyone that has a question before we do this little inner journey or something you want to share in the chat. Thank you so much for, you know, for everyone that's here, everyone watching the replay and for everyone who's sharing, because that really um, brings our conversation to life, right? It really helps us. And I'm sure everyone who's reading your, your comments, your sharing, it helps them as well. Okay, so I just want to check. As I wait, I'm just going to burn a little uh, copal. And then we'll go into our journey. All right. 
Okay. So let's go ahead. And so I invite everyone to take a few cleansing breaths. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to take that picture of the, um, forgot, before I forget, you know, how I'm putting everyone who's here live, you're going into a, a giveaway. So I'm putting your names. <laughs> I want to make sure that I get everybody every time. Okay. Close your eyes, take a few cleansing breaths. Welcome your beautiful soul. And if it helps to bring your hands to your heart, you can. And just see your soul in front of you with her heart. I'm just using that pronoun. Obviously your soul is beyond any gender. And see your soul's heart beaming love into your heart. And as that happens, see this beautiful path, this golden path that comes from you. It's like emanating from your heart to your soul's heart. And so in this inner journey, you're going to visualize yourself standing on this golden path. And the beginning of the golden path, you're on the earth plane. And as you stand on that path, maybe you look around and you can see like, whoa, you see all of the collective energy, the fears, the doubts, the trauma. You can kind of see all of that floating around in the earth plane. Certainly there's beauty as well. But in this moment, your third eye is open and you're, you're kind of seeing more of that other stuff. And as you look ahead into the golden path, you notice that at the middle of the golden path, there is this like portal. This portal and it looks like a, like a doorway. And on top of the doorway, written in like these golden letters, like in sparkles, it says soul plane. And you know that what you're looking at is this portal for you to enter into the soul plane. And the truth is, you've already done this many, many times. But we're going to do it together today. And you're going to do it with more intention and explicitness. And so go ahead and walk right towards the enter entrance. Don't walk through it yet of this portal. And welcome any guides that you want to be with you. Maybe your guardian angels. I see for some of you, it's some archangels, Archangel Michael, Archangel Uriel. For some of you, it might be a beloved ascended master. Maybe it's Mother Mary. I know Mother Mary always walks with me through the portals. Maybe it's Kuan Yin or Isis or Buddha or Baba G or Lakshmi, or, you know, any others that you connect with, or Jesus. Maybe for some of you, it's an enlightened ancestor. Now, I want to be very clear. I say enlightened, meaning this is an ancestor that does not have an ego anymore, Is not does not have an agenda with you. It's not putting any guilt trip on you. It's not like, oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. No, this is an ancestor that's beyond all that and is here as your ally. This is an ancestor, I'm listening, who, who also share their soul's medicine in their lifetime, and they are here to help you share yours. Maybe for some of you, it's a beautiful, magical animal, a unicorn, maybe a white buffalo, a pegasus, a phoenix. So just look around and notice who's there. Maybe it's just you, that's fine. And now you're going to walk through this portal. You just walk through it. It's like this beautiful glittery light and you step onto the other side and you're still on a golden path at this golden path. It's like, whoa, there's so much light and shimmeriness and you look around and you no longer see those dark energies floating around. You see rainbows and stardust and galaxies and whatever you see in your soul plane. And there waiting is your beautiful soul filled with light. 
and you're holding in your hand that belief, that fear that this part had, whatever it is, whether it's I'll be disappointed, I won't have enough energy, I feel guilty, whatever it is. And as you're there, you're just receiving, you're basking in your soul's light. Suddenly that belief, that fear of this part seems so small. And you're receiving the medicine from your soul in this moment. You don't need to know what it is, but maybe you're shown in a symbol or an image. And just let yourself receive. Let your physical body, your energetic body be upgraded so that you can navigate the soul plane with so much more ease, with so much more love, with so much more trust. And you realize that you're being filled up with this light so that when you go back to the earth plane, you're anchoring that light, not just for your parts, but for the world. And so before we go back, you're looking at your beautiful soul and your soul's looking at you. And you're asking your soul, beautiful soul, what action step do you want me to take today when I go back to the earth plane? And let's just be in, st in stillness and silence and receive that message. What action step? And then ask, is there anything else you want me to know? Is there a message you have for me today or a word or a symbol? And let's just listen for a few moments. And please know you may be receiving this all as light codes, so it's okay if you don't get any specifics. And then just thank your beautiful soul, and your soul thanks you so much as you walk back, walk back, walk back to the portal. You walk through the portal back to the earth plane, but you notice that back on that golden path in the earth plane, you look at yourself and you notice like, oh, you're radiant, you have more of your soul's light with you. And suddenly, it's so much easier to commit to receiving from your soul every day. Some block, some resistance was dissolved without you even knowing it. And you walk back, you keep walking towards your heart. You walk back into your body, into whatever physical place you're in. We ask your soul, we ask your higher self to help you integrate this activation, this healing, this expansion across all four levels of your being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, across all dimensions of time. And just take a deep breath and stretch in whatever way feels good. As we end, we close this inner journey, we bring our palms together and we bow to each other and our own beautiful heart with a namaste, namaste. So thank you so much, everyone. Your homework, your, your action step for today is to be with that parts diagram that you did. Continue to receive from your soul. Remember, I said a minute or less. You could do more. That's totally fine. But what a mistake people make is they think like, okay, I'm going to meditate for an hour. That's going to be so powerful. And then they skip three days. They skip a week. They skip a month. Now you go a lot further this is receiving. You're receiving that amplification, that ability to be in the soul plane and to bring it to the earth plane. Remember what my soul said, meditation is not an escape. 
that's the, the mistake a lot of us do. And it's understandable that we're like, oh yeah, take me to the soul plane. Forget the earth plane. It sucks. Ew, I don't want to be here. No, we need to go to the earth plane, to the soul plane, receive and bring it back, bring it back to the earth plane to remind everybody. Right? That's, that's, by the way, that is a priestess, right? As you know, I've been working on my second book and that is the priestess is adept at this, right? It's like, oh, this is our priestess training. And so practice number two was unblending from your parts. But notice practice number two needs practice number one because you don't just unblend from them. You, you bring them, not drag them. You bring that fear that they have into the soul plane for healing. So I want to read what Jill said. Thank you. My stuff was to celebrate that I read this stuff today. Yes. I could feel my managers wanting to add more to my list. But my soul has said, just celebrate today. Yes. That was similar to my step. Like when I was tuning in, it was like my soul showed me, okay, after this class, go eat. <laughs> and then it was like, um, lie down outside. Yeah, almost like celebrate that you're doing this five-day journey. Celebrate that you're in day two. Celebrate and, you know, just my courage to say yes to this, to do this. Like it was that, that was for me as well. There wasn't, I, I had a part that was like, okay, what is it going to be? But it was like, oh, okay. Like that's what it is. <laughs> so if anyone wants to share as we come to our closing today, oh, thank you, Valerie. I'm so glad. And so tomorrow we will go into step three. Tomorrow, the time is a little different. I believe it's 9 a.m. Central. And uh, we will talk about the power of our inner child. And of course it's inner children. And that's going to be so exciting. I'm so excited about this. And, um, and as you can see, it's like these upgrades to the teachings, right? I know some of you have been learning from me for a long, long time. And some of you are more recent and I'm so grateful for all of you. And I will, oh, somebody asked this question. If you don't attend the class, you will get the replays. As you saw, I sent the replay and, but the replays will be available only for a week. So you're getting a Zoom link. That Zoom link will expire in a week. I will, however, put the, I'm uh, uploading them to a private link on my YouTube channel. And then the replays will be housed in my private Facebook group, answering your inner calling. So if I know some of you are already in that group, so in that group, the replays will be there, you know, past the week. If that group is really specifically for you, if, and in fact, you, I put the link in my, in the replay, so you can read, you don't have to even, you can click on it. Doesn't mean you're going to join just when you click and read what it's about and what I'll be sharing. And there's agreements. And if you want to be part of that, you can absolutely join. You don't have to, but just to be really clear. Yes, Michelle, let's bring the place. So with that, I'm going to, I don't think I've ever shared online from this, that this, look at this or. You all know I have a lot of Oracle decks, right? So this deck is the only deck that has a book that I actually had to put tabs on, okay? So, which is why I don't often use it like uh, in classes. But then yesterday when I was playing, my inner child loves this deck. It's like, she loves this deck. So when I was uh, working on it, she was like, why don't you pull a card from that deck? And I was like, you're right. I don't need to read the whole long message. It's just like the images are so beautiful and like, I feel like they connect what's well, called the star child oracle. It's like connects us with that star child within us. Roxana, thank you for another. Oh, thank you, Roxana, for being here. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to pull one from there and I'm going to pull one from the deck from yesterday. Okay, this is for everyone, everyone here live, everyone watching the replay. This has 88 cards. So what I always do is I just cut it in two. <laughs> and... um. All right, what is the message from your beautiful, the, the child aspect of your soul, okay? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Initiation, deep trust, deep healing, reconnection with all. All right, everyone. So we're going through an initiation. I know some of you have heard me talk about what an initiation is. An initiation is when you're moving from one level of spiritual understanding into another level of spiritual understanding. Okay. So we're all in this together and look at this beautiful image. It's got this beautiful 
dolphin, I believe. And then there's like a tree coming out. Lots of blues. So just like, listen, and it, it has these like little symbols on the corners. That's why I have the tabs. Some have triangles, some have a butterfly. So just see how this speaks to you. And I think the beautiful question for you to ask yourself is, what am I being initiated into? What am I being initiated into? Okay, and I just look down at the deck and there's one sticking out. So I feel like, oh my gosh, I feel like I had to pull this one out. So, so purity, you are pure, open, spiritual eyes. Look at this. I feel like in a way got answered. What are we being initiated into? Look at this unicorn medicine, but you will get your own answers as well. So beautiful. All right, so then I'm just gonna pull a card from the other deck and then we will be done for today. Wait, let me make sure I've read. Okay, Valerie, so plain was so peaceful and sweet. Yes, Jill, don't judge the few things I missed, just compassion. Yes, <laughs> beautiful. All right, so then final card. What else, beautiful soul? What else do you want these lovely people to know? Thank you, everyone, for being here. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Memento Mori says the meaning is in the middle. Life, presence, depth. So what I'm going to invite you to do, I'm going to turn the card over and you're going to get the replay. So you can take a, well, I mean, if you have time to take a picture now, you can, but you also take a picture uh, when you um, get the replay and have, meditate with your soul. What is your soul telling you with this image? All right, here we go. Look at this. Look at this beautiful woman with the flowers. Look at this beautiful skull with the, there's crystals. I don't know if you can tell there's crystals. And look at this path here and look at the overlap. And it says, the meaning is in the middle. I'm getting a lot of insights and downloads. You will get your own. What is that over there? Those are butterflies, I believe. All right, my dears. And this is number 22, one of my favorite numbers. You do. I don't know this person, but I swear I've increased her sales because I'm recommending it and so many of my clients have gotten it. I agree. It's called the Magical Spirit Oracle. And just to show you, look at how beautiful the insight is. It has the picture in color, then it has an affirmation, and it has this beautiful meditation. I mean, it's great. Again, don't know the person, but like, all right. Bye, everyone. Lots of love. I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>